It all began one idle Tuesday evening. I had just wrapped up my daily routine at work, an unevenly 9-to-5 job, and was lounging on my worn-out sofa scanning through Craigslist. I wasn't searching for anything specific, it was more about killing time and perhaps finding an odd treasure or two, a hobby that had become my evening ritual. That night, something peculiar caught my eye. An ad posted in the free section, historic mirror free to anyone willing to pick it up tonight. Attached was an image of a large, ornate mirror, its frame carved with intricate designs that seemed to dance eerily in the dim light of the photo. It was beautiful, and despite the lack of need for it, the allure of its mystery and price, or lack thereof, drew me in. I texted the number listed, my fingers typing out my interest before my mind could weigh the consequences. The reply was almost instantaneous, which should have been my first warning. The person on the other end instructed me to come to an address on the outskirts of town, stressing it had to be picked up that very night. Driven by a mix of curiosity and spontaneity, I agreed. The drive took me through parts of the city I'd never ventured into before. As the buildings grew fewer and the street lights scarcer, an unsettling feeling began to coil in my stomach. I told myself it was just the adventure of it, the thrill of finding something unique. When I finally arrived, the house looked nothing like what I had expected. It was decrepit, the kind of building you'd see in horror films where you shout at the screen for the character to turn away. But there I was, stepping out of my car into the chilly night air, my breath fogging in front of me as I approached the shadowed porch. The front door was ajar, creaking ominously as I pushed it open. Hello? My voice sounded foreign in the surrounding silence. There was no answer just the echo of my own voice reverberating through the empty halls. I hesitated but moved forward, drawn by the inexplicable pull of the mirror that had brought me here. As I walked through the hallway, the air grew inexplicably colder, the shadows darker. I found the mirror in what seemed to be a living room, draped with a thin, dusty sheet. I reached out, my hand trembling as I pulled the cover away. The glass was colder than ice, my reflection staring back at me with wide, fearful eyes. But then, something shifted. Behind my reflection, I saw movement. I spun around, heart hammering, only to find the room as deserted as it had been when I entered. When I looked back at the mirror, my reflection was alone once more. Shaking off the unease, I decided it was time to leave, mirror in tow. The drive home was a blur of streetlights and shadows. By the time I arrived back at my apartment, I was convinced I'd let the eerie ambience of the house get to me. I lugged the mirror inside and leaned it against the living room wall, intending to hang it up properly over the weekend. That night, I dreamed of figures moving within the mirror their forms obscured and whispering in tongues I couldn't understand. I woke up repeatedly, each time convinced that the whispers had followed me from my dreams into reality. Each time I sat up, the room was silent. Over the next few days, strange occurrences began to unfold around my apartment. Objects moved on their own, doors would slam shut, and the air would often turn frigid. But every time I thought to rid myself of the mirror, a voice inside my head whispered to keep it. One evening, as I was reading in bed, a sudden crash jolted me upright. Heart racing, I rushed to the living room. The mirror had fallen forward but hadn't shattered. It was then that I heard it, a low, guttural whisper coming from the direction of the mirror. Stay, it hissed the voice chillingly clear. From then on, things worsened. The whispers became voices, multiple, always speaking just behind me, just out of sight. My nights were plagued with nightmares of dark figures around my bed, staring at me through hollow eyes. 
Then came the night that everything changed. I awoke to find my apartment unnaturally silent. The digital clock on my nightstand blinked 3.33 a.m. A sense of dread filled me as I noticed a dim light coming from the living room. I walked towards it, each step heavy with fear. The light was emanating from the mirror, which now glowed with a ghostly light. I stood before it, frozen, as the surface rippled like the water of a disturbed pond. Faces surfaced on the mirror, their features twisted in agony, their mouths moving rapidly as if trying to communicate. I couldn't move, couldn't scream. My body was no longer my own. One of the figures began to emerge from the mirror, its hand reaching out towards me, a silent invitation. A voice, louder than the rest, boomed, join us. Panic surged through me, breaking the paralysis. I stumbled back, crashing into the furniture. The figure's hand brushed against mine, cold as death. I screamed, the sound finally tearing from my throat as I turned and fled, not daring to look back. I didn't stop running until I was outside, the cold night air burning my lungs. Looking back from the street, I could see the faint glow of the mirror through my living room window. The figures watched me from the glass, their eyes gleaming with malevolent desire. I knew then I couldn't go back. I couldn't face what lay within that mirror. But as I stood there, shivering in the night, I realized the horror wasn't contained to just my apartment anymore. The mirror had opened something, a doorway that I had unwittingly stepped through. And somewhere, in the back of my mind, a whisper urged me to return, to embrace the darkness that beckoned. As the first light of dawn began to break, I turned away knowing this was only the beginning. The real terror had just begun. As the dawn painted the horizon with a hesitant gray, I found myself wandering the desolate streets, the chill of the early morning biting at my exposed skin. The haunting images from the mirror clung to the edges of my mind like cobwebs, each step forward a conscious effort to distance myself from the nightmare I had fled. Without a clear destination, I drifted aimlessly until I stumbled upon a small, 24-hour diner, its warm light a beacon against the dim morning. The bell above the door announced my entry, a jarring sound in the otherwise silent morning. The waitress, a middle-aged woman with tired eyes, glanced up from her magazine as I slid into a booth by the window. Morning, on coffee? she asked, her voice carrying a hint of concern likely prompted by my disheveled appearance. Yes, please, I murmured, my voice barely above a whisper. She poured a steaming cup and left me with a sympathetic smile. I wrapped my hands around the warm mug, the heat seeping into my chilled bones, but it did little to thaw the ice in my veins. As I stared out the window, watching the early risers begin their day, the reflection in the glass caught my attention. For a split second, I saw a face, pale, distorted, with hollow eyes staring back at me. I whipped around, heart pounding, only to find the booth behind me empty. When I looked back at the window, my reflection was mine alone again. But the seed of fear had been replanted, sprouting roots deep within my psyche. Leaving some cash on the table, I left the diner, the weight of unseen eyes upon my back. I couldn't return home, not yet. I needed help, but who would believe such a story? A mirror that housed spirits, or something far darker, which had now seemingly followed me out into the world. I decided to seek out the person who had given me the mirror. Perhaps they had some answers, or at the very least, could take back this cursed object. I pulled out my phone and scrolled through my messages to find the original Craigslist contact. The address was still there, a beacon of hope that perhaps this nightmare had a solution. The drive back to the house was tortuous. 
Each mile closer to the destination tightened the knot of anxiety in my stomach. When the house finally came into view, it looked even more sinister in the daylight than it had at night. The windows were dark, the garden overgrown, and the whole place had an aura of abandonment and decay. I parked the car at a distance and approached the house on foot, my steps hesitant. The front door was closed this time, and as I reached out to knock, it swung open on its own with an eerie creak. I stepped inside, the air stale and heavy with the scent of mold. Hello? My voice echoed through the empty halls, meeting no reply. I ventured further, each room as deserted as the last, until I reached the living room where I had first encountered the mirror. It was gone, the only evidence of its existence the deep impressions in the carpet where it had once stood. Suddenly, the air shifted, growing colder. A soft whisper floated through the room, you returned. The voice was not one, but many, layered and intertwined. I spun around, searching for the source. What do you want from me? I demanded, my voice shaking. The whispers grew louder, more insistent. Join us, join us, they chorused as shadows began to coalesce in the corners of the room. They slithered along the walls, forming the shapes of human figures, their features blurred and shifting. One figure detached itself from the wall, its movements jerky and unnatural. It approached me slowly, its face a swirling mass of darkness. I stepped back, my heart racing, as it reached out with a hand that was more mist than flesh. The touch was icy, sending a jolt of sheer terror through my body. No. I yelled, pulling away, but the figure persisted, its whisper turning into a moan. Stay with us. More figures emerged from the shadows, surrounding me, their hands reaching, their voices a cacophony of whispers and wails. I was trapped, the room closing in on me, the air thick with their oppressive presence. In a desperate bid for escape, I pushed through the figures. They felt like cold smoke, chilling and suffocating as I passed. I ran out of the house, not stopping until I reached my car. Breathing heavily, I looked back to see the figures watching from the windows, their faces pressed against the glass, eyes hollow and unblinking. Driving away, I realized that simply running was futile, the connection had been made, and now it was a part of me. I needed to find another way to sever it, a solution that didn't involve returning the mirror to that forsaken place. As I drove, lost in thought, the radio suddenly crackled to life. Static filled the car, then a voice cut through, clear and menacing. You cannot escape us. I slammed my hand on the radio, turning it off, my breath short and ragged. The road ahead seemed endless, each turn and hill bringing me no closer to safety. The realization was dawning on me that there might be no safe place left. The voices, the shadows, they were part of my world now perhaps irrevocably. And as I continued to drive, with no destination in mind, the sun began to set, casting long shadows across the road. The darkness was approaching, both outside and within, and with it, the certainty that this was only the beginning of the horror. The road unfurled endlessly before me, its monotony punctuated only by the occasional flicker of a streetlight as I sped past. The voices had quieted, the radio silent, but the sense of dread that had taken root within me grew with each passing mile. I was running, not from the place, but from the horror that seemed to have latched onto my very soul. As the landscape shifted, the familiar urban sprawl gave way to more desolate, wooded areas. The trees loomed over the road, their gnarled branches scratching at the twilight sky like the fingers of the damned. It was here, amidst the encroaching darkness of the forest, that I decided to pull over. 
The overwhelming sense of isolation weighed heavily on me, yet being in a moving vehicle no longer offered the illusion of escape. Stepping out of the car, the chill of the night air enveloped me, the silence of the woods punctuated only by the occasional rustle of leaves and distant animal calls. My head throbbed with a relentless pressure, the echoes of the whispered voices still reverberating in my mind. I leaned against the car, taking deep breaths, trying to steady my racing heart. Why are you doing this? I whispered into the darkness, half expecting an answer. There was a rustle from the edge of the woods, a subtle movement that drew my eyes to a shadowy figure standing just beyond the tree line. My breath caught in my throat as the figure stepped into a sliver of moonlight. It was humanoid, its features blurred and indistinct, but unmistakably one of the apparitions from the mirror. I backed away slowly, my eyes locked on the figure as it mimicked my movements, maintaining the distance between us. What do you want from me? I called out, my voice breaking with fear. The figure remained silent, its head tilting slightly, as if curious. The air grew colder, a familiar coldness that I had come to associate with their presence. I felt the pull, the same dreadful attraction that had drawn me to the mirror initially. It was a palpable, almost physical tether, tugging at the very core of my being. Desperate, I climbed back into the car, slamming the door shut and locking it. I started the engine, the headlights illuminating the figure which hadn't moved. As I drove away, I watched the figure in the rearview mirror, standing motionless as it was swallowed up by the darkness. The drive continued, each mile adding to my desperation. The solitude of the road was a stark contrast to the turmoil within me. It was then that I realized that physical distance wouldn't free me from the curse. I needed answers, and there was only one place left to look. I drove to the local library, a place I remembered housed a collection of occult and supernatural research books. The building was deserted at this late hour, but I had no trouble gaining entry. Inside, I flipped on the lights and headed straight for the archives. Hours passed as I pored over dusty tomes and ancient manuscripts searching for anything that could explain or counteract the supernatural phenomena I was experiencing. My hands trembled as I turned the pages, each book a Pandora's box of esoteric knowledge and forbidden lore. It was deep into the night when I stumbled upon a passage in a tattered leather-bound book titled Mirrors and the Veil Beyond. The text described mirrors not just as reflective surfaces but as potential gateways to other dimensions, capable of trapping souls than becoming conduits for entities from beyond. The passage detailed a ritual purported to sever connections with these entities, involving a series of symbols drawn around the mirror and a chant to be recited at the stroke of midnight. Fueled by a mixture of hope and desperation, I copied down the instructions, my plan crystallizing with each word. I would return to my apartment, perform the ritual, and confront whatever came through the mirror. It was a gamble, but I saw no other choice. Leaving the library, the night seemed even darker than before, the shadows deeper. As I approached my car, I noticed a figure waiting by the driver's door. My heart leaped into my throat, but as I drew closer, I recognized the figure as a homeless man, his clothes ragged, his eyes wild. Help me, he whispered hoarsely as I approached. They won't stop following me. I paused, the man's words chillingly familiar. Who? I asked, my voice low. The ones from the mirror, he replied, his voice a desperate whisper. You see them too, don't you? My blood ran cold. This man, a complete stranger, was experiencing the same terror. I nodded slowly, and he stepped closer, his eyes pleading. Show me what to do, he said. Please, 
I can't live like this anymore. I felt a weight settle over me, the responsibility of not just my own fate but that of the stranger who had inadvertently stumbled into the same nightmare. Together, we would face the darkness that awaited us. As we drove back to my apartment, the streets empty and the city around us eerily quiet, I realized that this night could very well be our last. But as the apartment building came into view, a determined resolve settled over me. We would face whatever horrors lay through the mirror, armed with ancient knowledge and a desperate hope for salvation. The man beside me gripped his seat, his knuckles white, as we ascended the stairs to my apartment. The door loomed before us, a barrier to the unknown. As I unlocked the door, the cold air from within greeted us, a silent herald of the night's trials to come. Together, we stepped into the darkness of my apartment, the door closing with a resolute click behind us. The ritual awaited, our only chance at reclaiming our lives from the shadows that sought to claim us. And as we prepared, the mirror loomed in the corner, its surface still and ominous, a portal to a realm of nightmares, waiting to be either sealed or open forever. The mirror stood ominous and imposing as I fumbled with the pages of the ancient tome, its worn edges fluttering in the slight draft that seemed to perpetually emanate from the glass itself. The homeless man, whom I'd only just met, stood nervously by the door, watching me with a mixture of fear and hope. We're really going to do this, huh? He asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Yes, I replied, more to convince myself than him. We end this tonight. The ritual was specific. We had to draw ancient symbols around the mirror with a mixture of ash and salt, creating a barrier not just on the floor, but on the walls and ceiling, encircling the mirror completely. As midnight approached, the air grew thick, charged with an electric tension that made my skin crawl. With trembling hands, I completed the final symbol just as the clock struck twelve. The silence that followed was suffocating, the kind of quiet that presses in on you, heavy and expectant. Now, I whispered, and began reciting the chant. The words were strange, twisting my tongue, ancient and powerful, vibrating in the air with an energy of their own. The homeless man joined in, his voice shaky but determined. As we spoke, the mirror began to react. The glass rippled like the surface of a disturbed pond, and a low hum filled the room, growing louder with each repetition of the chant. Shadows swirled within the depths of the mirror, forming faces and hands that pressed against the glass, as if trying to break through. The room grew colder, frost creeping over the walls and windows, encasing the room in ice. The light bulbs flickered and then exploded, showering us in sparks, plunging the room into darkness lit only by the eerie glow emanating from the mirror. Then, screaming. It was everywhere and nowhere, a cacophony of anguish that seemed to come from the mirror itself, echoing in the cramped room and in our very skulls. I clenched my teeth and continued the chant, the words now a lifeline that I clung to with desperate fervor. The mirror's surface cracked a single hairline fracture that quickly spread, webbing across the glass as the screams reached a fever pitch. I could feel something pulling at the very essence of my being, a force so powerful it threatened to rip my soul from my body. We can't stop. I shouted over the noise, my voice hoarse. Keep going. The homeless man nodded, tears streaming down his face from either fear or the biting cold or both. We pushed forward with the chant, our voices melding together, strong and clear. And then, as suddenly as it had begun, everything stopped. The room fell silent, the light returned, and the temperature slowly crept back to normal. We stood there, panting, staring at the mirror. The glass was no longer cracked, instead, it was perfectly whole reflecting only the room and the two of us. The shadows were gone, 
as if they had never been. We approached cautiously, half expecting something to leap out, but there was nothing. Just our own weary reflections staring back at us. It's over, I said, not quite believing it myself. It's finally over. The homeless man collapsed to his knees, sobbing with relief. I joined him on the floor, the adrenaline that had sustained me now ebbing away, leaving the exhaustion in its wake. We sat there for a long time, not speaking, just sharing in the disbelief and relief of our survival. The next few days were a blur of activity. I took the mirror to a remote area and buried it deep in the ground, covering it with rocks and dirt, ensuring that it would never surface again. The homeless man, whose name I learned was Tom, decided to stay in town, and I helped him find a job and a place to live. The bond forged between us in the face of such unspeakable terror was unbreakable, and we remained in close contact, a support system for when the memories grew too heavy. Life slowly returned to normal, or as normal as it could after such events. I went back to my job, my routines, but with a newfound appreciation for the simple, unhaunted life I had so nearly lost. The nightmares still came sometimes, whispers of what had happened, but they were just echoes, nothing more. Years passed, and the horror of that night became a distant memory, a story to tell on dark nights to those who enjoyed a good scare. But for Tom and me, it was always a little more real, a little more terrifying, because we knew the truth. The mirror was gone, but the lesson remained, some things are better left unfound, untouched by human hands. We had peeked behind the veil and survived, but we were the lucky ones. Others might not be so fortunate. So, if you ever come across an offer that seems too good to be true, think twice. And if it involves an antique mirror, free for the taking, walk away. Some doors, once opened, are not so easily closed. <laughs>